So here we are now, the last lecture of the course. We will learn to code DOM events. Last but not the least, like I told you before, using the events, we implement the DOM. So the lecture is important and gonna be lengthy because we are gonna cover a lot of stuff. So at this point, we can almost make any change to the DOM document, like add new nodes, remove nodes, manipulate classes, etc. So we have learned to make changes and those changes were manual without involving any event and when we involve events and let the events make changes things become interactive and dynamic for example the user clicks somewhere on the page and something happens so the click is actually an event the same way load is also an event so we can also program a load event and say change the background color of the web page when it loads in the browser Right, so using events, we can automate changes. We can involve users in the browser. So this is what we are going to learn in this lecture. So let me first give you the outline of this lecture. We will try to understand two important terms, event and event handler. So these two terms are important and we'll try to define them. And after that, we will start coding the event. Events can be coded in three different ways. We call them inline events, property events and event listener events. We will learn how to code them and we'll also discuss pros and cons. And finally, we will discuss the use of event object and the event target property. So that is the outline of this lecture. So let us start with the term event. What is an event? An event is just an action which is performed by the user or the browser. For example, click is an event, double click is an event. Mouse enter and mouse leave are also events. Load is an event. Get focus, lose focus are also events. Drag and drop are also events, right? So events simply are actions performed by the user or the browser. When an event is performed, we usually say an event is raised. For example, when the click is performed on the button, we would say click event is raised or the event is raised. So when an event is raised, it should be handled. There must be something defining what will happen when the event is raised. For example, when the click is performed, then what will happen? So that's something who defines what will happen when the event is raised is actually called event handler, right? So the event handler is going to define the entire action performed by the event let me give you an example let's say we click on a button and as we click on a button the color of the body is changed so in this example click is an event and what happens when the click is raised body gets different color so the change of body color is actually defined by the event handler right so the event and the event handler are two different things but they are connected every event should have an event handler that actually defines the event i hope i make it clear to you now one last thing before we move on it seems like event handler is something big a complicated thing and that is not true event handler is just a user defined function a normal function that we have in the javascript so event handler isn't a rocket science it's just a function which is attached to any event for example, in the JavaScript, a function can be created like this. So this function ABC is the normal function. But when I attach this function to any event, it will be called event handler. So we use the term event handler, which is nothing, just a user-defined function. I think now it should be clear what is an event and the event handler. Let's now move on. It's now time to learn to code the events. And in JavaScript, there are three different ways to do that. We can actually code inline events, property events, and listener events. Listener events are modern. Today, we use listener events in modern JavaScript and avoid inline and property events because they have limitations and you will experience by yourself very soon. So let's begin with the inline event and learn how do we code them. So I have got a very simple HTML, as you can see, a button and a paragraph. And what I want to program is when the user clicks on the button, the text 
in the paragraph gets changed. So inline events are directly coded to the HTML. They're just like inline CSS. So directly on the button, we will add an event attribute. And the name of the event is on click. So now the inline event on click is added directly to the button element. So we have an event click. And what is needed now is just an event handler. And like I told you earlier, an event handler is just a function which is called when the event is raised. And so now we need to call a function. We need to attach a user defined function. So let's say the name of the function is change text. Now you can relate this line of code to whatever I said earlier. We have an event and handler. The event handler is connected to the event. And when the event is raised, this function is called. Now all we need to do is just define this function in the JavaScript and code its functionality. So let's do that. That's it. Now you see, it wasn't so difficult. We also need to select the paragraph and we can do that outside of the function because inside the function, variables have limited scope. They can't be accessed from the outside. So here we are selecting the paragraph, right? So we need this paragraph variable inside different functions. So that's why I put it outside of the function. Now, to the paragraph, we will call the text content property and put another text. So now we have coded an interactive feature. As we click on the button, the text is changed. Let me refresh the page. Now click on the button and here you can see the text and the paragraph is totally changed. That was amazing, right? As you can see, things are not manual anymore. We have an event that manipulating the DOM. So this is how we code inline events. The name of the event starts always with the prefix on in this case. And the name should always be in lowercase, right? So let me give you some more examples. We can apply on load event to the body element. So when the body loads in the browser, this event is raised. And when the event is raised, we will say change the background color of the body. Now in the JavaScript, we just need to code and define the handler. So we are changing the background color of the body. So initially, body has no color. But when it loads in the browser, we will get yellow background color. Let me refresh the page and you will see, right? The color of the body is changed when it loads in the browser. And here, you also see the CSS is applied. So click is an event, load is an event. There is a long list of events. I will try to use the most common one in this lecture and put the list of all the events uh, in the description of this video. One last example on inline events before we move on. The mouse enter event. This event is raised when the mouse pointer comes to the element. And we are applying this event to the paragraph. So when the mouse pointer comes over the paragraph, this event is raised. And what we want to do when the event is raised? Let's say the paragraph gets a border, right? So get border is the handler function and we need to define it. And to the paragraph, we're gonna call the style and then border property. And let's say one pixel solid red. So as the mouse pointer comes over the paragraph element, the border is applied. So let me refresh the page. Now pointer to the paragraph and here you see the border, right? So just in this document, we have coded three different events, load, click, and mouse enter. Load event is raised by the browser, click and mouse enter by the user. So that was inline events. Now the question is, should we use inline events or not? The answer is no. They're only used for educational and testing purpose. So you will avoid inline events for the same reason like you avoid inline CSS. CSS in a separate file is more maintainable. Just like that, JavaScript in a separate file is maintainable. And maintainable things are actually practical. There can be hundreds of events on a single page. So just imagine the maintenance effort on hundreds of events coded 
directly on the HTML. Now, the second option that we have is called property event. Property events are far better than the inline events because they are only coded inside the JavaScript file. But they aren't good enough to replace the listener events. They have some drawbacks and we will check them out. So property events, like I said, aren't coded in the HTML. So we need to reset our HTML and remove all the inline events. So how they are coded? They are actually applied directly to the element in the JavaScript. So that means we need to grab the elements in the JavaScript before we apply property event on them. So let's first grab the elements. Paragraph is already there and we need to grab the button element and the body can be selected directly with its property. So we don't need to grab the body. So we just need to get the button element. So as before, on the button, we are going to register the click event. So using the period operator of a call on click event property like this. And to this event property, I will assign the handler just like this. That's it. The event is applied and the handler is registered to the event. And you need to be careful with the function handler or the event handler. There won't be any parentheses at the end because we are not calling the function. We are just assigning it to the event. And so to the paragraph, like before, we can apply mouse enter and the handler to the paragraph is get butter. And to the body, we can call on load event and can apply change background. As handler. So now you can see a totally different version of what we had before. No JavaScript in the HTML. All the events are in the JavaScript file. And they are the same events. Click, mouse enter and load. So let's check the result on the page. So let me refresh the page. As you can see, body got the yellow color. That means load event is fired and handled. Now I click the button and the text is changed and pointer on the paragraph and you see the border. So everything is same. The output is same but the code is much better than the previous one so that was the property event and now once again the question is should we use property events or not and the answer is they can be used we can use them they are good and manageable but there is a drawback with the property events and that drawback is the event on the specified element can't call two different handlers so that is a drawback let's have an example on that so that you get better understanding we have click event on the button and change text is a handler, right? So to this event, I want to call another handler. Let's say I want to inform the user like the text is changed or modified. So I need to create a function handler and we can call it show alert and then the alert message in the function like Now this show alert will also be called by the click event on the button element. So here we have the problem, the drawback with the property events. The same event on the same element can't call two handlers. So in this case, show alert is the last one added to the on click property. So it's going to override the previous value of the on click, which is the change text handler. So the show alert will work and the change text won't. So let me show you in the browser. Let me refresh the page and I'll click on the button. As you can see, the alert message from the show alert handler and the text is not changed. So that is a drawback. An event on the element can't simply call multiple handlers. And this drawback is actually addressed by listener events. So using listener events, an event can call multiple handlers. So it's now time to learn to code the listener events. Listener events are the part of the modern JavaScript and they're more organized and have better structure than the property events. So in order to code listener events, we actually call a method to the elements. And that method is called add event listener. And it takes two mandatory parameters. The first one is the event, name of the event. And the second one is the handler. 
So the event and the handler are two mandatory parameters to the method. So now I'm going to remove all the property events. Now we'll code the same events using the listener method. So to the button, we're gonna call the add event listener method like this. The first parameter to the method is the event and the event we are gonna assign is the click, comma, and then the second argument, which is a handler. That's it. Now the button element gonna listen for the click and when the click is performed, this handler is called. And here is the definition of the handler. So let's check it out in the browser. So let me refresh the page, click, and you see the text is changed. To the paragraph, we can try mouse enter event. So the name of the event is mouse enter and the handler is get border. So refresh the page in the pointer with the paragraph and now you can see the border. So this is how we code listener events. And you remember the drawback with the property events and they can be now solved using the listener methods. For example, uh, to the button, we can register another click. And this time we would call hide itself handler. The handler is not defined, so we can define it down here. So button is gonna hide itself. So we need to set the display property to none. So now you can see the same element, the same event, however, different handlers. So there is no overwrite. So let me refresh the page. And now what will happen when I click on the button? The text will be changed and the button is gonna hide itself. So let's make a click and here you see. So the click event, on a single element calling to different handlers. So let's now move on. Now we show you some variations with listener method. As we know, in the JavaScript, we can code functions in several different ways. We can code normal functions like the one we have here with the keyword function and the name. And we can also code anonymous and the arrow function. So that means these event handlers can also be coded differently. At this point, all the event handlers are the normal functions. So instead of normal functions, we can also code anonymous and arrow functions as handlers. So let me show you an example of both. They're very practical and get used a lot. So here, instead of calling change text function as handler, we can simply call an anonymous function like this. Anonymous function and the arrow function have no name. Now the handler function is the anonymous function. And it's not outside, it's inside the listener method. And the function has its own block. You can see the curly braces. So now the click is performed on the button. Simply this function is called. And all the changes we wanna make, we will do here inside the function block. So the code that we have in the change text function, we can put it here in the anonymous function. And now we don't actually need this change text function. So you will get the same result. Only the handler now has become the anonymous. So if you refresh the page and click on the button, now you can see the text is changed. So this one is very practical. Arrow function as handler is also very popular. So to the paragraph, we can simply call the arrow function like this. So here we have the arrow function as handler and the function also has its block. As you can see the curly braces and now the code the function this one and we don't need this function anymore and just paste the code here so now you can see three different variations three different ways to code handlers you can simply use normal function like this and the function need to be defined outside or you can simply use anonymous and the arrow function they are coded inside the listener method because they have no name and they can't stand alone. So my dear listeners, that was all about coding events in the JavaScript and we have learned to code them in three different ways. But we are not done with that. The last thing that we need to cover is what is an event object and the event target property. You need to know these two things in order to create advanced applications. So let's learn these two concepts, they're important. And I'm gonna remove everything I wrote
So in order to understand the event object and the target property, we need to set up some more HTML. So let's have a UL with the ID to do and place some list items like task then. We can also experiment with the buttons. So let's have a div with a class number and some buttons like one. So this is our HTML setup now and that would be the output in the browser. So let us start with the list item. We have four different list items. So on these four list items, I want to find out where the click is performed. Like the user clicks on the first task, on the second task, third and fourth. So this is what I want to accomplish. And why I want to do that? I will show you in a couple of minutes. So in the JavaScript, I'm going to first select the UL element. And to the UL, I will apply the click event. And we call a handler function. So the click is applied to the UL and UL goes from here to here and it contains four list items. List items are also the part of the UL. And so now using the event object and the target property I can simply find out where the click is performed on the UL. In other words which element is clicked by the user. So let me show you how. In the JavaScript to the event handler we are going to pass a parameter e like this or you can choose another parameter name like event so e or event are a standard names that we use to represent the object so event object is just a parameter which is passed to the function and it has extra information about the event so if you need extra information about the event then you need to pass it to the function like this and to extract that extra information event object has several properties. The most useful property is the target and it tells exactly where or on which element the event is raised. So in our example we have registered the click to the UL and UL goes from here to here and it has several children. So where the click is performed on the UL can be retrieved using the event object and then by calling the target property on the object. So now uh, in the console we can check it out event target. So the first event object is passed to the function and inside the function we are calling the target property on the object. So let me refresh the page and open the console. Let me click somewhere task 1 and now you can see the task 1 is returned test 2 is return, test 3, test 4. Now you can see the elements I am clicking on are simply returned and it will also return the entire UL if I click somewhere here. Uh, now you can see the entire UL is returned. Right? So using the event object and the target property you can simply read where the click is performed. So it's a very useful concept. You can simply select the element by clicking it and when the element is selected you can start manipulating it. So let's say to this application, I want to program like click and remove the task. So in your HTML, let's say to every ally, I can put a remove option like this. So now the click is performed on the remove, which is actually the span element, and span is a child. Uh, of the ally. So click on the span can simply give us the entire li. So let me show you how li event dot target dot parent node. So when the click is performed on the span this event target gonna return us the span element but we don't only want the span element we call further parent node property to the span returned by the event target. So the click is performed on the span and the element which is retrieved is the entire li. And when the click is performed on the second span, its parent is returned. So just by click on the span, we can get its parent. So when we have the selected li, we can uh, 
uh, remove it from the parent using the method remove child so let me refresh the page now click on the remove as you can see all of the ally are gone now you must have realized the importance of this object and the property now one last thing how do we know which button is actually clicked we need buttons in many applications like calculator or tic-tac-toe so how do we find out which button is clicked or which option is clicked it can easily be done using the event object and the target property so let me show you before we mind up this lecture so we need to grab all the buttons so here we have all the buttons in a node list we need to walk through all the buttons and to every button we will call add event listener and the event is click and here I will make a variation I will call simply a normal function get button value so this one is very practical code grab all the buttons loop through all the buttons register the event and the handler now all the buttons have one thing is common they have the same handler so how do we find out which button is actually invoking the handler this can be done using the event object and the target property so we just need to define the handler like this and to the handler we're gonna pass the event object that's it now in the cancel I can show you the result of the target property so if the click is performed to the first button it's gonna invoke the function in the event target gonna return the element raising the event or invoking the handler refresh the page and click on the buttons you can see all the buttons the button which is clicked or invoked the handler is actually returned but we are not interested to the whole button we just want the values and these values are the text content so to the target we can further call text content now the clicked buttons text value the text content is returned refresh the page and now click so you can only see the values so that was another example on the use of the event object and the target property so my dear listeners this is now time to wind up this lecture and wind up this course and i hope this has been a wonderful journey and you have learned so much about the term do tell me how do you find it leave your comments in the comment section of this video and don't forget to watch the 10 dom manipulation task lecture that lecture is a great learning resource and we give you more information more knowledge about the term i will see you around in other lectures thanks for taking this course